Welcome back to the boat sheet. Many people are intimidated at the thought of docking big boats, but generally bigger boats are easier to handle than small ones. In truth, the single engine stern drive powerboat is the most difficult boat to handle around the dock. In this video, we're going to look at a cheat which makes this easier and will get you alongside in even the trickiest situations. First, let's look at why I say these boats are the hardest to handle. The example here is the Bayliner Sierra 275. This one has a 200 horsepower diesel driving a Bravo 3 stern drive with two coaxial contra-rotating props, so there's no prop walk. It has a high bow and large freeboard from the bow to almost four-fifths or so of the length. This is typical of most boats in this class. The Bayliner is used not because it's any harder to handle than any other powerboat, but because there are lots of them out there, so it's a good example. Looking at it from the side, we can see that with the planing hull, there is very little of it in the water. This makes it good at getting from A to B quickly. In order to give as much internal volume as possible and to give the cockpit a dry ride, the hull is chined and has a large freeboard. This is a great arrangement for a comfortable high-speed pocket cruiser, so it's no surprise that so many boats use this basic concept. From ahead, the small, shallow bow below the waterline contrasts enormously with the large chine and much steeper hull and superstructure. From underneath, it's really clear how little of the boat is in the water, and the keel is very shallow with chines using forward movement to provide stability rather than a deep keel. And this means that the boat moves very easily sideways in the water when it's not moving forwards. There's no such thing as the perfect boat. Every design is a collection of compromises. The downside of this design when it comes to docking is that there's very little of the hull that sits in the current, while a great deal of it is in the wind. Added to this, the engine is well aft, so the centre of gravity is well aft too. On top of that, the stern drive is flat sided and grips the water like a rudder or a small keel. So in a situation where you have a modest tide towards the dock and a modest breeze blowing off it, you might be forgiven for thinking that the current would dominate as it normally does with boats and push you towards the dock. However, in a planing sports cruiser, that's not how it works. If you arrive at the dock slowly, it can seem impossible to get the bow to stay close enough for long enough for the crew on the bow to lasso a clean. And with many of these boats, stepping down from the bow is not really an option. If you're really well organised and your crew is fast on their feet, they may be able to step off at the transom with a bow line and secure you to a cleat. But there is an easier way. If you have wind and tide both pushing you off, then this cheat is especially helpful. The cheat involves using the mid cleat, which on this sort of boat is not always the easiest to get to because the screen gets in the way. So you will need to rig this line while you are preparing the boat for docking so that it's easy once you get there. Pass the end of a dock line through the legs of the mid cleat on the side of the boat that you want against the dock. Bring both ends outside all parts of the boat and all fender lines and into the rear of the cockpit. This is best done in an open space so you can do this without the prop turning. Then if you drop the line into the water it won't foul your prop. The part of the line above the mid cleat should be attached to the aft cleat with an oxo rather than a cleat hitch so that it can be easily adjusted later. If you're not sure what an oxo is, check out our oxo video. The part of the line emerging below the cleat should be taken outside everything so it can be attached to the dock. Put a bowline in, in the end of this with a loop large enough to easily fit over the dock cleats. Then attach it to a boat hook. To see how this is done, check out our boat hook bowline video. Leave enough line to ensure that the bowline can be held out at full length of the boat hook aft of the transom and take up any other slack by adjusting the OXO. Make sure all spare line is coiled and secured inside the boat. Finally, make sure that the only person standing or moving around in the cockpit is the crew securing that line to the dock, because you're going to want a clear view out of the back of the boat. 
The cheat is simply to manoeuvre the boat towards the dock going astern, aiming the end of the transom which is going against the dock at the cleat in the middle of the space you want to use. Come in as slowly as you can. This is a lot easier than you might think because you only have to steer the stern drive to where it needs to go and the rest of the boat will follow because it's all downwind and downstream of the prop. Note that the boat is ferry gliding across the current and only very small steering changes are needed to control the boat laterally. Keep your rate of closure very small by putting the engine in and out of gear if idle astern makes you come in too fast. Don't let the prop get too close to the dock. The boat hook will allow your crew to attach the line from a few feet away. Once they've done that, they should put the boat hook down inside the cockpit and take up as much slack as possible by undoing and redoing the OXO, but without pulling you back against the dock. You hold the boat in position while they do this until they tell you that they have the line secured and they're ready for the next bit. Once they do, initially put the engine into neutral and steer fully away from the dock, in our example, to port. Then put the engine in forward with idle power. If the current or wind are very strong, you might find you need a little bit more than idle, but always use the minimum possible, keeping everything nice and slow and calm as the boat moves around towards the dock. If space is limited, when you're part way round, then ask your crew to be ready to take up slack, and once they are, put the engine into reverse, keeping the steering where it is. The crew releases the OXO, keeping a turn around the aft cleat, and pulls through all the slack as you move aft. When you've gone back far enough, ask the crew to re-secure the line, they simply redo the OXO. You can then put the engine into forward idle once more. Once the fenders are up against the dock, leave the engine in forward idle until the bow line is secured and then secure the boat in your usual way. This cheat also works single-handed, but in a strong current or wind, you will have to be quick to attach that midline before the boat drifts too far off the dock. But with practice, this works just fine. Rigging is slightly simpler single-handed, just an OXO on the mid cleat once you've threaded the line through it. And this allows you to take up the slack easily enough with no chance of the line slipping off the cleat while you're working one-handed. Single-handed, you may also need to leave room for the midline to stay at full length, unless you've got friction on your helm, in which case, you can apply a bit of friction and then use one hand on the engine control and use the other on the line to take up the slack. I hope you find that helpful. If so, please click like and click subscribe to help us make more videos like this one.